Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for preserving our lives. Thank you because we know you are watching over your own. You've given us a ministry, each individual here, brother and sister. And we know that nothing will touch the lives of your children until they finish their service for you. And we know that the circumstances and the situations in the world will not determine the destiny of your children. Their destiny is in your hand. We praise you because you have been preserving our lives. And we pray that you continually preserve the lives of your people who are serving you in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. When Jonah chapter 1. Today we're looking at Jonah. The first study, Jonah the prodigal prophet. You understand the prodigal son? That's the one that went away from home and will not stay with the father. We're not talking about a prodigal prophet that didn't stay in the center of the will of God. We're looking at verses 1, 2, and 3 today. Open your Bible, please. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a sheep going to Tarshish, and he paid the fear thereof, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. There are some people, some commentators that treat the book of Jonah in an allegorical manner. That means they take it just as a fictitious story to bring some lessons out of it. Other people think it is just an illustration for the children of Israel so that they'll get a particular lesson. But from the testimony of the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, we know that Jonah was an historical figure. That means he actually lived he had a time of ministry in the land of Israel. And then the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he tells us about the ministry of Jonah. In fact, he talked about the experience of Jonah. Come to the Old Testament in 2 Kings chapter 14. 2 Kings chapter 14 verse 25. He restored the coast of Israel. From the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which is spake by the, by the hand of his servant, who? Jonah, the son of who? The son of Amittai, the prophet, which was of Gethhepha. So you'll see he's talking about the same person we're looking at today, we're studying today, that Jonah actually lived at a particular time and uh, different times the lord jesus christ himself referred to jonah and we have the record in matthew chapter 12 matthew chapter 12 from verse 39 matthew 12 verse 39 but he answered and said unto them an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonah was in the three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. There you learn very clearly that Jesus Christ believed that Jonah actually lived. He lived at a particular time. And then when he was going to talk about his death and burial and resurrection, he made use of the experience of Jonah to show those people that were doubting that he was going to die, he was going to be buried, and he'll rise again. In Matthew chapter 16, reading there in verse 4, Matthew chapter 16, 
verse 4. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There shall not, there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Once again, you understand that as you compare scriptures to scriptures, that Jonah actually lived at a particular time. Now in the gospel according to Luke, chapter 11, reading there from verse 29. Luke 11, 29. And when the people were gathered sick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonas, the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign to the Ninevites, so shall also the son of man be to this generation. But start it till the men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment of this generation, and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. If you notice all those references I've read to you, you will find out that Jesus Christ mentioned the life of Jonah, the ministry of Jonah, the very fact that he disobeyed the Lord, and he had to go into the belly of the great fish of the whale, and came out again, and then got to Nineveh, and ministered to Nineveh. And even the result of it, that Nineveh repented. Five things then. Number one, Jonah actually lived. Number two, he was swallowed up by the great whale. Number three, the great whale, the great fish, vomited him up again to live. Number four, he went into Nineveh to preach the word that the Lord had given him. Number five, Nineveh repented. As we look at these first three verses today, we're looking at three points. Number one, the divine directive. The Lord made it very, very clear what he was to do. The commission he was to have and the ministry he was to have in Nineveh. The divine directive. Number two, a deliberate disobedience. He knew where to go. He knew what to do. He went the opposite direction. Number three, a downward destination. A downward destination. We come to number one, the divine directive. We we'll look at Jonah chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 and see what the Lord told him and see that it was very, very clear what he wanted him to do. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. That's how the prophets of the Old Testament received inspiration. That's how the uh, prophecy was given to them. That's how the mind of the Lord was made known unto them. They were not left in the dark. The Lord had called them. And he communicated with them directly. And here we find the word of the Lord coming unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go, cry. You'll find that those three words, they're words of action. They're verbs, and he told him, Don't stay where you are. There is a ministry that is given unto you, and you will not uh, accomplish that ministry where you are. Arise. And then, it's a far away place. It's calling you to foreign mission. It's a great commission that will take you from where you are to where the people are. Go. And then, when you get there, you will not shut up. You will not close your mouth. You have a ministry. You have a message to declare unto them. Cry against it. Cry unto them and tell them their sins have come in the presence of the Lord. This divine directive will find the Lord has given to the church. And he has given to every member of the church. We're looking at Mark chapter 16. And we're looking at this direct, uh, this divine directive. The divine commission, the great commission that the Lord has given to his own people. In Mark chapter 16, reading there in verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, said unto the disciples, said unto the church, the church then and the church now, the believers then and the believers now, the followers of Christ then and the followers of Christ now, the people that say they believe the Lord and they say they love the Lord. If he loved me, you keep my commandments, he said. He said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's so clear. 
And that is the commission the Lord has given to the church today. And if anybody professes to be a member of the church of the living God, he professes to know the Lord and to love the Lord, there is just but one thing to do. That is to do what the Lord has commanded the church to do and to follow after the divine directive that the Lord had given. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Then, you know, he's talking there about evangelism. He's telling us our responsibility to the world. There is a perishing world out there. There is a wicked world out there. There is a sinful world out there. There is a world that needs the salvation of the Lord out there. And they need the salvation of the Lord. And the Lord himself will not come back to teach the people, to lead the people unto salvation. He has given that commission, that divine directive unto the church. And he wants the church to take that gospel and take it to the world out there that's exactly what he told jonah it's like uh, the people of nineveh nineveh was the capital of assyria and the assyrians had been waging war against the israelites and the israelites they counted the assyrians great enemy and their wickedness was so great in fact history tells us the atrocious things that they did because of that the people that were patriotic with the children of Israel, with their nation, they had this national identity, national solidarity, that they will not want to do anything with Assyria. That uh, informs you of why Jonah did what he did, and instead of going to Nineveh, he went the opposite direction. And he will not do what the Lord want him to, wanted him to do. But then the Lord is telling us today that we will not do like that. He's giving us that divine directive and it is a task that must be done. In fact, as you look at the whole book of Jonah, you will see the attitude of the Lord, the concern of the Lord, and the conflict and the controversy that Almighty God had with Jonah because they will not follow the divine directive in Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 19. At this time, the, uh, Peter uh, had been put in prison. And then the Lord was going to perform a miracle. And the receipt for the miracle, we're told, in verse 20, look at verse 19, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand, and speak in the temple they, to the people all the words of this life. Here we have the divine directive again. The angel came from heaven. And he said, Peter, you have been in prison. That's suffering. That's trial. That's persecution. But persecution should not stop the preaching of the gospel. That's why Paul the apostle said, he was in chains, he was bound. But the word of God is not bound. That means then, whatever the circumstances around us, whatever the situation around us, and whatever the suffering in individual lives, individual families, the Lord is telling us, the great commission must not suffer because of the individual problems that we have. And the angel told Peter, he said, even though you have been in the prison, there is just but one thing to do. Arise, get out of that place, and go and preach uh, unto the people all the words of this life. In Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Reading there from verse 7, we we'll see what the Lord uh, commanded Jeremiah to do. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I say, I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And that is the commission he has given us. And there is no way of dodging it. There is no way of escaping it. It's a divine directive that must be done. You remember when that uh, young fellow wanted to follow the Lord? But then he said, oh Lord, there is for, uh, one thing for me to do before I preach the gospel. And it is to go back home and bury my father. And then the Lord told him in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. 
what he ought to do what should be the priority of his life and what should be the priority of your life too many of us who say we're christians we have another kind of priority the thing the lord has told us to do we're not focusing on it we're not directing our efforts on it we're not spending and we're not being spent on it but the lord said in that uh, uh, in that uh, luke chapter 9 and in verse 16 jesus said unto him let the dead bury their dead dead is talking about the people in the world who are dead in sins and trespasses it's talking about the people that do not have spiritual life and therefore the people that do not have spiritual life there are things they can do and they can even do it better than some of us who are christians and therefore he says let the dead bury their dead but you go and preach the word look at it in verse 60 but go thou and preach the kingdom of god that's what the Lord is expecting that we now, in this age and in this generation, will concentrate upon. The divine directive was very clear to this man. Go and preach. And it was to preach, to tell them, repent or perish. Somebody said his message was just about three words, turn or burn. That is, if you don't turn, if you don't repent, if you don't give your life and your will and everything back to the Lord, if you don't walk in the way of God's commandment, there was danger coming upon Nineveh. And 40 days were determined upon Nineveh. The judgment was imminent and their repentance was urgent. God's commandment to us is the same today. And it's still very clear. And there is one thing the Lord has given us to do. And it is, rise up, go and preach. What was the attitude of Jonah? we come to point number two a deliberate disobedience a deliberate disobedience he knew what to do he knew the will of the lord he knew the divine directive he knew the great commission he knew the call of god upon his life it was to go to that foreign nation that place that capital of assyria and declare the word of god unto them but then we're told what he did as we come to Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1, we're looking at verse 3 now. Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of, from the, presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found the sheep going to Tarshish. So he paid the fear thereof. Stop there for a moment. You, you will see that uh, when he got to Joppa, uh, the, uh, the people who have studied the archaeology and the situation of that place at that time, they tell us that uh, from the home uh, of the residents of Jonah to Joppa is about 75 miles. Because that's the, the Joppa, uh, Joppa was a place where I'll be able to take a sheep. And then they tell us that Joppa was in the middle of Nineveh and Tashish. Tashish was to the west. And Nineveh was to the east, and Joppa was in the middle. And when he got there, having the mind to run away from the call of God upon his life, he found the sheep waiting for him. Maybe he would have said, you see now, circumstances even prove that uh, I am okay the way I am. Many times, circumstances will aid you to disobey the Lord. To the son of the lord and you will see that those circumstances they justify a deliberate disobedience against the will and the word of the lord somebody tells us this way he said the world will always provide a sheep to take you away from the will of god if you have the mind to go contrary to the will of god the world will always make a way for you I will always make the transportation available for you to go contrary to the will of God. The world will always provide a sheep to take you away from the will of God. And then he paid the fear. And it costs so very much to disobey God. The old book of Judah, in fact, is telling us how much he paid. Because the coins he paid at that time when he entered the sheep was not just a cause. It's suffering in the belly of the whale. And then when you go to chapter 4, the sons catching him, everything he went through in suffering, that was the cost he paid in going against the will of God. You'll find the same thing in your life as well. That when you go against the will of God, and he has called you to preach, and you say, no, I have another assignment. I have something else I want to do. 
then you find real suffering in your life. And well, you say, maybe he ran away for another reason. Maybe he was afraid of the wickedness of the Ninevites. Maybe it was because he didn't have a supporter. A people that will assist him and help him so they can do the work together. You know, he himself explains in Jonah chapter 4. Jonah chapter 4, reading there in verse 2. And he prayed unto the Lord. And he said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my sin when I was yet in my country? Therefore, I fled before unto Tashish. For I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great uh, kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. He said, I know that if I went there to announce judgment to the people, I know what you are going to do. I know you are going to forgive the people. I know you are very merciful. I know you are very compassionate. I know you will not allow those thousands of people to perish like that. I know those people might become afraid of the judgment of God and they will just repent and then, and I want them to perish. I don't want you to show compassion on them. I want you to lay your heavy judgment upon them. He said, that's why I ran away. Is he the only one that has demonstrated del deliberate disobedience in the history of the scriptures? And even in contemporary times today, no, not at all. If you look at your Bible very well, you'll find there were people in Bible days. They knew the will of the Lord. The Lord had announced to them what they ought to do. But no, they will not be obedient unto the Lord. And those people that are deliberately disobeying the Lord, they have not all died. There are still people today that are disobeying the Lord and they will not take the great commission seriously in uh, Exodus chapter 4 Exodus chapter 4 reading in verse 12 now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say and he said O my Lord send I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou wilt send and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. You see, what, uh, the, the Lord knew, the Lord uh, uh, told him what he ought to do. He knew what he ought to do. And yet, he, he had his own peculiar reasons. He had his own uh, personal reasons. Why? He will not do what the Lord had uh, told him to do. In Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. In verse 9. Deliberate disobedience then i said i will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones and i was weary with forbearing and i could not stay jeremiah said i knew the will of the lord i knew what he wanted me to do I knew you had given me the word so I can give it to the people. I knew that he told me not to think of personal reasons, peculiar reasons. Don't say you are a child. You go to the people that I will send you. Uh, the Lord had told him. But because of the difficulties and the dangers of the way. And of preaching the gospel. Then there was deliberate disobedience in the life of Jeremiah. And he said, I told the Lord, I won't do this again. I won't preach the word again. Great commission, let it lie where it will lie. Let it stay where it will, where it will stay. Let the people that will do it, let them go and do it. Uh, there are enough reasons that will justify my keeping quiet. Am I not doing it? And then he said, that watch of the Lord, that the Lord had given him, the great commission, the great commandment, the divine directive that the Lord had given him. It was shut up like fire in his bones. And then he said, I couldn't stay anymore. The Lord caught up with him. Like eventually he caught up with Jonah. And he said, this is my will for you. This is my commission for you. It must be done. What you want is not the issue. What the Lord wants is the issue. And the work must be done. And we will do it in Jesus' name. I said we will do it in Jesus' name. And you know, in the past, we are very serious about this evangelism. It's evangelism and holiness, holiness and evangelism. 
the life so that we ourselves will be able to make it straight to heaven when we die and then that will carry the gospel to the people that are perishing so that they will not just live for the mundane things of the world and eventually perish and go to eternal lake of fire and we will go to the bus we go to the market we go to the uh, various stations we get to our offices everywhere we found people we declare the word of god unto them and people were getting saved more through personal evangelism than more through church programs but eventually we concentrated on ourselves like jonah and we had a personal peculiar private reasons why what the lord wanted to be done was not being done and will not be done but if the lord had left uh, that, that man like that a lot of things would have been lost i pray that the lord will not allow us to forget this great commission this commitment and vision to evangelism in jesus name that each of us will be like paul the apostle and here is what paul the apostle said in acts of the apostles chapter 26 acts of the apostles chapter 26 verse 19 whereupon o king agrippa i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision that's the testimony the lord wants you to be able to give at the end of your life that you are not disobedient unto the heavenly vision i come to point number three in point number three we're talking about a downward destination a downward destination if you look at the life of jonah there's something you will see very clearly jonah's departure from god and from the will of god was a downward journey he went down to joppa then he went down into the sheep then he went down into the sea. Then he went down into the belly of the whale. And then the whale carried him down to the very depths of the sea. When you forsake the great commission, when you lose the thirst, the vision, the passion for souls, and for carrying out the great commission, either as home missions or foreign missions, your life will take a downward trend. You'll be going down and down and down. You'll say the people in the village, they are after me. But they may not be the people of the village. You'll say the economy is going down and it's affecting me. It may not be the economy. You'll say, I don't know why. I see this, I see this. Everything is just downward, downward, downward. It may not be the way you are looking. It may be because you are forsaking that great commission. Therefore, the judgment of God is after that individual and you are going down and down and down. In Jonah chapter 1, the latter part of verse 3. Jonah, Jonah chapter 1, latter part of verse 3. We're told that he went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord. Look at verse 5. The latter part of verse 5. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the sheep. And he lay and was fast asleep. Look at chapter 2 verse 6. In chapter 2 verse 6. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. And so on, on and on. You find that when we forsake the way of the lord what the lord had deliberately definitely told us what to do and we want to go our own way then eventually the bible describes us that we're going down in genesis chapter 12. genesis chapter 12 verse 10 and there was a famine in the land and abram went down into egypt when you leave the place you ought to be, when you leave the commission the Lord has given you, and then you go away from the will of God, from the revelation of God, from what the Lord wants you to do, your journey from that point on is a downward journey. In Genesis chapter 26, Genesis chapter 26, verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him, this to Isaac, and said, Go not down into Egypt. 
If you're going to Egypt, you're going down. You go into the world, you're going down. And you leave the thing the Lord has called you to do, you're going down. Judges chapter 14. Judges chapter 14 verse 1. And Samson went down to Timnath. You know the rest of the story. So then if you forsake the way of the Lord, you forsake the will of the Lord, and then you abandon the great commission, and you think you have another program that is more important than the program that the Lord himself has given, your life will be going down and down. And you know that Egypt is a picture of the world. When you go, you leave the Christian, uh, the Christian faith, the Christian community, and the assignment the Lord has given you, and you go to the world, you are going to Egypt. And if you go to Egypt like that, you are going down. In Isaiah chapter 30, reading from verses 1 and 2, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for hell. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for hell. That's chapter 31, verse 1. Come to chapter 30 now. Chapter 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and cover with a covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that they may, that they may, that, that walk to go down into Egypt. Well, the point is very, very clear. That Jonah, instead of obeying the Lord, he went down to Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, went down into the sheep, went down into the sea, went down into the whale's belly, went down to the depths of the sea. Are you going away from the Great Commission? From evangelism? Passion for souls? And that doesn't hold your interest anymore? And you have some other things that hold your interest? Are you going away from the will of God? Are you on a downward trip from uh, the place where you are, from the center of the will of God, where he has called you? Are you going back to the world? And then now you have your own program. You have your own program for development on education, on this one, on that one. The work of God, we can abandon that now. Evangelism, we can abandon that now. I have some other things I want to do. Even God will understand. Uh, nothing will move in this world now without certificate. If you don't have certificate and you don't have this, you will not make it in life. I have to abandon the great commission and then go to Tashish. You are going down. I pray that we will repent today. That the divine directive was the Lord has called us to do. We will do it in Jesus name. You rise up and you will tell the Lord. You will not be like Jonah. You know the divine directive. You know what the Lord has called you to do. You know the great commission. Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Open your mouth and pray. Dedicate yourself to the Lord. Don't let there be a deliberate disobedience in your life. You know the calling of God. You know the will of God. You know the demand of the great commission on every believer. You have preached it to other people. You have practiced it before yourself. What are you going to do about it now? Are we going to say because of circumstances around us? Because of situations around us. Because of making ends meet. Or because the, peop the people are hard-hearted, they will not hear. Those Ninevites, they are wicked people. If anybody goes there to preach to them, it's going to be another story. I don't know what will happen. I'm still young. I don't want to waste my life. I don't want to die like this. I don't want to uh, injure myself. Uh, there are too many wicked people in the world now. You don't know who you are talking to anymore. Go and preach. Go and declare the word of the Lord. The great commission is an assignment the Lord has given to every believer. He has given it to you. Do it. Do it. Do it. Create time for it. Give yourself wholly to it. Addict yourself to the work of the Lord. Arise, go, and preach.